guys. So seriously, swinging bridges. I'm at the parking lot. Let me show you here. Last two times I've been here, there's like 30 motorcycles. Yeah, not one. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what though, it's gonna be a good ride. I've got uh, my buddy Boyd coming. He's gonna be with us uh, on an 850 GS. And then we'll be meeting up with uh, Bev and another gentleman new to the ride. Bev's gonna be on a 250. Not sure what the guy's ride. So, should be a good day. Uh, good pace, good clip. Um, you know, that's the way it goes when you ride a motorcycle. So I'm so excited to be out today. Uh, good weather, you can see the sun's starting to kind of pop back up again. A little windy, a little cold. Other than that, should be good. So, guys, I'll give you some heads up as we keep going. Thanks. So for many of you, the Missouri Swing and Bridges ride is not something you're familiar with. Uh, it's an annual event that's typically held in May, uh, right after we've had lots of rain, lots of, uh, of the small creeks are swollen. Uh, usually we have two or three of them that are impassable, but it's usually a really good time. Uh, this year due to COVID-19, it was, um, you know, there was a question on should we postpone it or not. Some of the people went ahead and rode it, uh, and then the rest of us were going to be doing it in October. So starting up about 45 minutes west of St. Louis, Missouri, uh, we start heading south. Uh, we typically head south-southwest for about three to three and a half hours before uh, accessing and getting to the Bixby Country Store. For anybody in the St. Louis, Missouri area, it is an iconic place for motorcyclists to stop. The, the roads down here, not only do we have forest roads and do we have gravel pits, uh, but the roads are nice and curvy, and so anyone on a bike that wants to have fun, this, this is the part. Uh, of, of Southern Missouri that's just fantastic. I got gas and I'm gonna get a coffee too. So unfortunately, Boyd had to leave us, uh, go take care of some personal business, but we did have uh, the other two riders join up at the, the Bixby Country Store, and uh, for the next day and a half, we had a fantastic time, despite the uh, temperatures never getting uh, below 41 degrees Fahrenheit or above 49 degrees Fahrenheit. We decided to stop and get some lunch at uh, Echo Bluff State Park, which is actually going to be the uh, most likely our staging grounds for our February ride. Uh, it's a fantastic lodge as well as uh, campsites, and uh, they've actually got some cabins that you can rent as well. Food is pretty good, scenery is beautiful. Uh, just this, this area as a whole is just a fantastic place.
Yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I always love seeing this bridge. It means we're about 20 minutes away from the hotel and the end of the day one. We get to unpack, get cleaned up, uh, get some food in our bellies, which is always wonderful. But I always, you know, every time I see this, I think of some old cowboy western movie where I always want to blow up the, the bridge that the train's going to go on. And, and that's kind of what I think of this. So fortunately, it hasn't been taken down by fire or vandalism too much yet. Uh, so it's a beautiful place. If you, if you get down this way, it's a nice little, uh, nice little memory. While day one is mainly a lot of uh, Mark Twain National Forest roads, uh, a lot of woodsy type environments and low water crossings, day two is really where we see the swinging bridges. Uh, by the way, no, I was not putting Jägermeister in my tank that was actually uh, <laughs> some fuel stabilizer that I carry in that bottle. Day two is really a lot more of your country farm roads um, and a couple, I think there's three or four swinging bridges. I only got to see two, the other, the other two riders went ahead and finished up those uh, portions of that. But there's some fantastic history uh, as these bridges were, were built by a farmer uh, out of baling wire uh, just to basically be able to get back and forth. I know the state's been wanting to decommission these for quite a while because I think it's got a three ton maximum uh, load weighting on there.
just shortly after these bridges, uh, we took about another 20, 30 minutes worth of riding and then stopped and had lunch for the day. At this point, I split off and headed back to St. Louis and the other two riders uh, finished up, I think, about another half of the route. Uh, rarely have I ever finished this entire route uh, on a weekend. Usually I'll come back on another day and, and uh, ride this, uh, the Sunday route backwards. So headed home, about two and a half hour ride for me. Uh, got home, got a nice hot shower and bath and uh, enjoyed uh, putting this together for you guys. I hope you enjoy these. Uh, it's always a delight and a pleasure to have you watch them. So thanks for doing it. Uh, and a special uh, shout out to those that rode with me.